Hi everyone. So I just I should probably just apologize for the amount of time it's been since the last time I made a video. I've been very, very, very busy. I've been running in the general election. I didn't win. I'm not an MP, although I did unseat a very uh, big and very influential MP. Um, so, yeah, I've had my big impact. It took up a lot of time, a bit of press and smear campaigns against me. Actually, Socionics made an appearance, which I guess is quite a good thing. But, yeah, that's the reason why I haven't been posting any videos on the Socionics side, because the political side just completely took over. Well, that is now over, and here I am back again making uh, videos in the Explain Correctly series. And the next type contrast to talk about is the ENTP versus the ESFP. Now, when talking about these two types, you may assume they are very, very different. Yeah, they, they are pretty different. But again, they are alike in some very surprising ways. So let me talk about how they are alike, first of all. Well, first of all, we have the fact that they are both energizers, both extroverted types, that's the E. And of course, they are both um, perceiving or irrational types, hence the P in both of them, EP types. Um, and also, by merit of being EP types, they are also reductivist or static types, right? And these go together to form a shared temperament, you could say. And what is that temperament? It's a certain high energy, very quick switching sort of temperament. And it's quick. the reason it's known as reductivist or static is that it's very much sort of fast switching from one fixation to another, to another, to another. Everything is very distinct in the flow of attention and how they direct their energy towards different things. And the switching is quite rapid because of the high level of energy. And of course, the irrationality here, the idea that it's about lots of different things or possibilities, uh, different ises, you can say, rather than oughts that are the focus of attention. So the idea is that both these types are shown as tending towards I, I, I'm interested in this, I want this, I'm going after this, but then there's this, and then there's this, then there's this, then there's this. So both of them have that rapid switching effect that comes from both being energizers, both being rational, and then both being reductivists. So any changes in the abrupt and instantaneous change. Um, the ENTP, of course, is going to be looking at that in terms of more intellectual sphere, the ESFP more in the social sphere. But again, the same kind of temperament, the same direction of energy towards very different things with very different values. So yeah, that's one way in which they are similar. But that's quite a superficial way in which they're similar. There's also a far deeper way in which they are similar. And this goes into actually the last uh, reigning or type dichotomies, uh, which are um, identifier. Um, they're both identifiers, which means as they are alphas or gammas in terms of their quadrant values, they are both focused on an axis about how close things should be to one another. They should be entangled together and all together, or things should be kept apart. And you'll find with the ENTP and ESFP, they are both on that dialectic of things being either together or both being apart, not about the locus of change in which things are taking place. And that's because one is an alpha, the ENTP is an alpha, and the ESFP is a gamma. But there to being alpha and gamma, they're both identifiers. Um, they also, um, in occupying that axis, they also have another quality, which is the same, which they're both antithetic, or what's often been called asking types. And what does this mean? Well, they are both types which start in a position that is contrary to their, their values, as it were, in this axis. This axis of, you know, how far apart should, things should be or how close things should be together. So the ENTP starts off kind of independently minded. And the ESFP starts off as kind of... Um, group socially minded. Um, so both of them end up a bit like that. One is very much a free thinker, the other is very interpersonal, very engaging, very chummy with people, just naturally. But here's the thing, their values take them in the opposite direction. 
So they almost cross over and almost swap places as they become more attuned with their values, as they go on that journey of self-discovery and self-fulfillment. So you'll find that the ENTP becomes more socially grounded over time. They find their community. They find the people which they can be part, they can be part of. And they can bring their unique contribution to the community. And the ESFP, on the other hand, um, discovers uh, the need to be independent and need to maintain a distance from different sorts of people. And they become more independently successful on their own merits. And so you find that both these types, in discovering their values, they both go through a journey of change. And in doing so, they start to gravitate more towards the other side of where they started. This is something which you don't see in other types, which are uh, thetic, which already set the direction for their quadra values. But these are the two types which are almost crossover. There's almost a, a, a changing or a switching vertigo going on in their journey. And that way, again, they're similar. So they are both this sort of very sort of quite high energy, rapidly switching sorts of types that go through a sort of journey of change along the same axis. And they sort of cross over in doing that. Um, they are also affirming types. They are affirmers. They, are, they have a sort of positivism, as it's also called. So they are essentially affirming a certain value that is important. Um, for the ENTP, that is the value of decency. They are saying that, yes, things are great. We can include more things. Let's try more things out. And the ESFP, it's more about achievement and, and sort of this idea that, um, yes, we are going to achieve more, we're going to take more things on. I'm not going to, you know, preserve a system. I'm going to look at how I can improve it to make it yet better, to get more effect effective, to achieve more successes. And so both are affirming and adding more and more things, as it were. Um, so, yes, um, they both affirm the particular uh, virtue in which they are acting towards. And also both of them are clockwise. And I say clockwise, also called a process type as opposed to a result type. But the idea is they are both in, um, engaging in behaviors which bring about a, a kind of social progress. In the way both these types transition the particular um, processes around them along to the next stage in the social progress cycle. You could say that both these types being quite rapid switching types that are affirming or proposing many different things, right? Making different propositions in a sort of rapid switching way in a way that um, is sort of um, causing a sort of change in and of themselves and their own values and discovering where they are in their journey while also leading to this social progress. These are kind of cardinal types, as it were. These, these are types that make suggestions, make propositions of what could or should or, or, or will be done, and as a result, bring about a kind of societal change. That is the nature of them. These are the two types, as it were, that despite their many differences, which I'll go into in a moment, they, 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 they play out the same silhouette. They dance the same dance. And that dance is one of almost throwing different propositions, different suggestions onto a board and seeing whichever stick. And in doing that, that is both quite chaotic and both the EDP and ESFP are kind of chaotic and disruptive in their own ways, right? But their chaotic disruptiveness is catalytic rather than destructive, rather than breaking cycles and preventing things from going along. If anything, their disruptiveness is one which leads to the societal change. The new, either it's a new idea or it's a further initiative that then leads to the social progress. And the ENTP doing this in the intellectual sphere and ESFP doing this in the social sphere. Both of them, by being those antithetic types, as I said, going through a transition of themselves, they also then bring something else, something from outside of the camp into the camp 
to lead to that sort of change. This is something you find with all antiphetic types, but the sort of the energizers that are also irrational, the rapid switching, they have that sort of chaotic approach of doing it, which is again catalytic, which leads to this sort of change or sort of transformation in the social progress. Um, so yeah, that is how they are kind of similar. And in that way, they're both benefited by the SEI in the case of the ILE and the um, the ILI in the case of the SEE, who sort of exist to take that chaos, as it were, and whittle it down to the few ideas that actually can stick, uh, whether in a sort of socially acceptable way with the SEI and the, and the so with the ISFP and the ENTP, or in terms of the is that going to work long term, which the INTP brings to the ESFP. So yeah. That's how the ENTP and the ESFP are actually similar. Very different types, don't get me wrong, but yet fulfilling that same silhouette. If you were to sort of squint and look at their movements, as it were, it would be the same kinds of movements, the same kind of role that they are playing. As long as you divorce yourself from the kinds of information whether it's intuitive, or logical, sensory, or ethical, and the values that are being put forward by these types. So yeah, that's how they are the same. How are they different? Well, this is perhaps the more obvious part, uh, the less surprising part. Of course, the ENTP is intuitive and logical, whereas the ESFP is sens sensory and ethical. And so what you'll find is that the ENTP is going to at ideas fit together and make sense. Now, the ESFP, on the other hand, by being sensory and ethical, they are far more social than intellectual. They're far more about playing that disruptive role in terms of finding out what relationships to have with each, each person, thinking tactically, getting a measure of the person, how close they should be, how to work with them, how to draw in different allies in order to achieve certain objectives. And so there's sort of a, a tactical, political approach where the other one's more abstract intellectual. Okay, that's a very clear difference. Um, also, um, in terms of their asymmetries, Right. Um, the ENTP is space locked and sight locked. So the ENTP is a type which um, is especially good at the breadth of different ideas and perspectives, but broadening their ideas, thinking outside the box and are especially bad at the day to day details, the, the logistical side. They miss out the details quite a bit. So that's their asymmetry. Um, whereas the ESFP instead of being space locked they are time locked so for them they are very tactical in the moment action oriented and um, as a result they're not strategic they're not good at the long-term outcomes of things they don't think very far ahead they're not good at knowing how things will turn out so the entp yeah they can actually do a bit of mixture of the tactics and a mixture of the strategy perfectly perfectly well um they just can't do the logistical side because there's so much into the ideation of new ideas and possibilities. The ESFP, on the other hand, can do a mixture of the ideation. They can think outside the box to a certain extent, and they can do the more logistical, detailed stuff. But they're so firmly into the tactical side, what to do now, think fast, act now. They're not very good at thinking further ahead into the longer term. Where are things going into the long term? So again, their asymmetries are different. Um, similarly, I said that the ENTP is sight locked, the ESFP is speech locked. So the ENTP, right, they are very good at the amassing of facts, how things work, how to apply it, how to improve things, how to utilize the information effectively. Um, and as a result, they're especially bad at the personal subjective evaluation. They don't often know their personal attitudes or feelings towards people and things. Um, the ESFP, they have that they, they can do both of those things. They are not uh, good at um, the introverted logic, the um, the logical criteria, the making of things consistent. 
but they are very good at the emotive expression, the engaging with people. They are very, very charismatic, very charming ESFPs. They know how to charm people, even though they're not particularly interested in charming people. They're far, they tend to be far more uh, sincere than that, but they're able to engage with anyone and make themselves well-liked if they want to be. Uh, whereas the ENTP, they can do some of getting themselves well-liked. They also can do the logical structuring. But again, they can't do the personal subjective evaluation, which ESFP can do. And ESFP can do also some of the factual side and the pragmatic how things work side. So again, asymmetries, not matching up. They've got different asymmetries. Okay. Um, another thing is that the ENTP and ESFP um, have... Um, very different values. Again, one's an alpha, one's a gamma. So what does that mean? Alphas are world accepting and clarity seeking. So ENTP is very much in favor of broadening the realm of possibilities, being open to new ideas, and also having the sensory world being more harmonious and enjoyable in the day to day and um, sort of free of um, aggressive confrontations or the limiting of possibilities to certain outcomes. It's more about being open to the world, open to new ideas, and sort of allowing things to get on peacefully. Whereas the ESFP, no, they're world rejecting. So they're far more into confrontation. They prefer things be more direct and even more assertive and take action now, and they prefer in, um, possibilities to be narrowed down. They want to have a clear direction in terms of where they want to go. They don't want to be wasting time speculating for the sake of speculating. So there's a certain impatience to an ESFP, whereas an ENTP doesn't have that same kind of impatience. It's more of a desire to experience different ideas and possibilities. Um, and also, as I said, the ENTP is clarity-seeking as be, by being an alpha. So they value the facts being made consistent, the idea that things be drawn in certain theoretical structures, everything can make, be made sense of in a coherent, consistent way, and that emotions, that feelings are expressed towards everyone around them, that there's a sort of mood or vibe that people can engage in, and they, they, they like things to be very much about a positive emotionality. The ESFP does not care for that one bit. They're far more about a quite relentless pragmatism, how do things work, how are we going to achieve things, what is this actually leading to the results we want to see, as they have a certain, very almost certain sort of pushy, how do things work, how can we improve it, whatever works, I don't care about theory, I just want things to work effectively in my tactical goals. So that's a big, big difference. And also ESFP is far more comfortable with personal, uh, often, often quite critical judgment of people, in a way that the ENTP is not comfortable. The ENTPs hate judging people. They like to have an open, tolerant, inclusive environment where everyone just discuss different ideas openly. But the ESFP, by being a type which is both sensor, sensory and ethical, so in, again in the social, but also being world-rejecting and integrity-seeking, take quite a harsh approach to personal judgment of people. The ENTP being more the abstract intellectual sphere, yeah, that, that's completely opposite of them. So one is wants open discussion, different ideas and possibilities. Anyone can join in. It's all about sharing enthusiasm for new possibilities and explaining it and making sense of it. In theory, the ESFP has no interest in that. It's about who are these people? Do I trust them? How close can I should I be to them? Should I keep them away from the people I really care about? So harsh personal judgment of people and then moving that towards practical achievement oriented ends. So no theory, make it purely pragmatic, whatever works. And they want to get on with things and get things done in that respect. Um, and again, personal social judgment that maybe the ENTP is not comfortable with. But for the ENTP, abstract exploration of theory which an ESFP is not comfortable with. Okay, so big differences there. Finally, I can say that the ENTP and the ESFP are different in that they are stubborn in different areas. So the ENTP is a determined type. They're very stubborn about things being kept open in different possibilities. They are the sort of type which can't be discouraged from engaging in a new idea or new possibility. Uh, they don't want to have their possibilities narrowed down by others. They'll decide what is possible and what's not possible, and they'll tend towards things being possible and to be tried out. Um, the ESFP, they are looking for someone to narrow down the possibilities. They, they want that help, right? That the world of the abstract, they want it as clear and straightforward as possible. 
Um, instead, what the ESFP is stubborn in because they are an exacting type is in their space, right? They want things to go the way they want it to go in the present moment. So they are the dominant person in any relationship that they're in. They take charge. They want things to go based on their will. And so they won't want someone else being pushy around them or deciding how things go. How things go. They're quite intense and quite uncompromising in their intensity. They're not going to relax things and make things smooth and harmonious if they want to get things going and get things up at the intensity that they need, which they feel goes with achievement. And so they're going to be quite stubborn in that. Whereas an ENTP, they're very yielding in the day-to-day, -day, right? They'll have someone take over the day-to-day -day stuff, day-to-day -day details, look after their day-to-day -day needs. They're very yielding in that area and will allow someone just to take over that because they don't want to have control over that because it's just a headache for them to be able to deal with. They, they want someone to advise how to smooth things over, make things more comfortable and palatable in the day-to-day. -day. They're very receptive to that information. So ENTP needs to be very different in what they're stubborn about. Similarly, again, how they're stubborn and not stubborn, the ENTP is contrarian. So they are also stubborn in their ethics. And it's a weaker area because they're a logical type. So the ENTP is stubborn over the need for things to appeal to how other people see it. Right? They want that they are a sucker for uh, crowd approval. And they may often do things for the sake of how people will react to them and must fish for reactions from people. They do that at the expense often of their personal one-to-one -one relationships, which you can often forget about. Um, they're far more about the expression of emotionality than holding personal attitudes and sentiments. Um, and yeah, they will they will stick to that. They will stick to that pursuit of emotional gratification, um, even when people suggest they shouldn't, because for them, they only really see that as valuable, not the other side, which is their blind spot. The ESFP, they are very fluid in balancing and very masterful actually at balancing both extroverted ethics and introverted ethics. They value introverted ethics, their personal relationships more, but they're very, very capable in the extroverted ethics, the emotionality side. And so they are both engaging across a large group of different people while maintaining very closely particular personal one-to-one -one relationships that are of import to them. And they'll move between those in a way which an ENTP can't move between those. They're only in the, the emotional um quite public emotional uh, engagement side without the ability to really hold on to those one-to-one -one relationships which can often get them in the end because it's a weak area and it's a stubborn area whereas ESAP is a very strong but very flexible area um yeah um so, however the ENTP's logic is very flexible because they are um by being contrarian they're not obstinate so the ENTP is very masterful at utilizing both extroverted and introverted logic together to quickly amass a sense of how things are working, how things can be applied and improved, while also finding the underlying logical structure, how it all fits together and makes sense theoretically. So they can quickly update their knowledge bases and reform and recalibrate their explanations to new situations. And the ESFP isn't so able to do. Why is ESFP not so able to do this? It's for them, they can only do the updating based on the facts. They can only look at each situation and learn from each situation how to apply data to those situations. What they lack, and what they're, they're stubbornly against being able to do, is to form coherent logical explanations based on rules. ESFPs don't look at the world in terms of rules. They frequently will go off the tram lines of how things fit together and make sense. Uh, they take an whatever works approach, purely pragmatic opportunism. And as a result, they can easily move too fast and break things without thinking about why these rules are there in the first place. They don't understand. Them. And when they explain things, they find it very difficult to really formulate a coherent logical explanation across the variables. Because for them, each situation is going to be different. They will, they will see all the exceptions to any kind of rule someone will suggest, and they won't be able to form a rule as a result. So they don't form rules. They are just how things work from one situation to another. It's alien to them to formulate some kind of ruling to apply across to another situation. They, they, they don't do it. They're allergic to that, basically. 
So, yeah, they are stubborn in different areas. The ESP is stubborn and weak in its logic. Uh, the ENTP is very strong and flexible in their logic. Meanwhile, the ENTP is very weak and stubborn in their ethics, and the ESP is very strong and very masterfully flexible in their ethics. So those are the ways in which th these types are different. And I've said how they are the same. I hope that was helpful. Uh, next time, I'll look at the ENTP versus the INTP. Thank you very much.